What's up everyone? Welcome to Working Underwater. If you're new here, this channel is all about commercial diving, marine construction, underwater exploration. So if that sounds like something you're into, you know what to do. Let's get into it. Topside just lowered the burning gear down, and I'm getting the ground clamp on a piece of rebar that I'm about to cut off. Now since we're underwater, we're using direct current electrode negative, so the ground clamp is actually positive in this scenario. And I actually have a full video coming up all about why we use direct current electrode negative. It's for safety, efficiency, a lot of things, but we'll talk all about that in a future video coming soon. So I'm getting my gloves on here. You have to wear rubber gloves when you're burning underwater because it's obviously going to reduce the risk of shock, ventricular fibrillation, electrocution, a lot of stuff that you don't want. These fish with the zebra stripes are called sheep's head, and they have these human-like teeth that they use to bite into oysters and different shells to get the meat out. So once I start working on the pile and you know stepping on it and breaking into it to get down to metal so I can burn, um, oyster meat gets in the water and you basically get swarmed by these guys. I have had them bite my fingers before, but they're usually not an issue. The single black cable is our ground clamp, which is positive in this setup. And then the green hose, which is taped to the other black cable, that's our oxygen line and the negative lead, which goes to the end of the torch. Everything appears to be in order. I'm going to do a quick bubble test on the torch by pulling the trigger and making sure bubbles only come out the end of the rod and not where the rod meets the torch. And we're ready to start burning. This torch is very similar to an oxyacetylene torch that you would use on the surface, but this torch pushes more volume and you want to do more of a reciprocating digging type of motion rather than a steady stream like motion that you would do on the surface with an oxyacetylene torch. Both underwater exothermic cutting and surface oxyacetylene cutting use the same core principle of controlled oxidation, but they achieve it in different ways. The underwater torch uses a tubular rod with magnesium inside that's hooked up to oxygen and electricity, and the rod is consumed as you cut. And the oxyacetylene torch achieves the same controlled oxidation, but with no consumable magnesium rod just to control the flow of ignited gases. Alright, we got our next piece cleaned up and our positive clamp secured, but if you look at the end of the rod, you can see some of that green insulation on the outside melted over the tip, and we have to peel that back and scrape it off to make good contact to spark our next burn. When I spark this next cut, take a look at the base of the rod where it meets the torch. You can see we have an oxygen leak here. Now this is particularly dangerous because you could potentially have a fire that chases up the line to top side. The uh, torch could blow up in your hand. It's very rare because you have fail safes in place like a flash arrester that's going to extinguish any kind of fire chasing up the line. But with that kind of leak, we definitely need to change the o-ring or get that rod seated in there a little tighter next time. It's definitely not always easy to spot problems like that oxygen leak that we just saw. Keep in mind, what you're viewing now is about three to two to three times better than what the diver actually sees looking through the helmet. The diver is looking through a small faceplate that's likely scratched up, fogged up, and there's zero peripheral vision. Another variable to keep in mind that adds just a little more complexity to this dive is that this pile is protruding about 10 feet from the seafloor, so I'm not just standing next to it working, I'm actually hanging off the side of the pile with one hand. Sometimes I switch hands, and sometimes I just wrap my legs around the pile, and then I can lean back and use both hands, so keep that in mind, and also this pile is battered, that means it's coming out of the seafloor on a slight angle. So right now, I'm actually dangling, hanging underneath the bottom side of the pile. I'm just about done cleaning up that next piece of rebar that we're going to be burning. I'm going to move myself and my leads and the umbilical to the back side of the pile and come at it from the other side. That way my umbilical and the leads aren't going to be draped underneath where I'm working and where all the molten metal is going to be dripping. 
If you've noticed this blue air hose that seems to just be dangling there with no fitting, that's actually exactly where it needs to be. That's what's called the diver's pneumo, short for pneumofathometer. And that's basically a super accurate way of topside gauging our depth. And it's also a secondary or alternate air source because in an emergency situation, maybe the regulator freezes up on main air, something like that, you can actually stick that air hose up into your helmet. It's a backup air source. Now that I'm repositioned, my umbilical and the burning leads are now draped away from me. So no molten metal is gonna be dripping on them. They're not gonna be getting in my way and I can just more freely do what I need to do. Just about ready to start burning again, I gotta peel back the tip of the torch again to get good contact. I'm also gonna push that rod in there a little bit better so we don't get that oxygen leak this time. Pull the trigger to make sure no oxygen's leaking out of the base there and ready to go back at it. Now you can see these little champagne bubbles coming from the base of the torch where it meets the rod. Those little champagne bubbles are actually pure hydrogen bubbles formed from the electricity splitting the water molecule back into hydrogen and oxygen. So when you see those little champagne bubbles, that's nothing to worry about. That actually means that your gear is wired correctly. But the bigger bubbles that you're seeing coming from the same area, that's still that oxygen leak. It's a lot less now, so it's really nothing to worry about. So this is actually some super durable number 18 rebar that they allegedly can't even make anymore. If you ever do see a pile underwater that has rebar sticking out like this, just know that it is very old because they no longer use rebar in piles. They actually use pre-tensioned cables so that the concrete is constantly under load. But these piles here are ancient. They're, you know, from World War II. If you want to know more about this job, I've already published a full episode about it from beginning to end, the whole process of extracting piles out here at the site of the new Coast Guard pier construction. Burning the rebar is just one small piece to the puzzle. Thanks for making it to the end. Don't forget to drown that like button, and I'll see you the next time we're working underwater.